What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very special video. We are gonna go over the top tiling tools you'll need to complete any job. So if you are new to tiling, this is a great video for you because I'm going to give you the rundown of all the cutting tools, the setting tools, the grouting tools, etc that I use for almost every job. Um, if you are a veteran to tile, maybe you'll find something in this video that you've never used before, and maybe you can discover a new, a new tool that you'll come to love. Um, or if you are a DIYer, this list will help you so much to figure out a complete list you're gonna need to complete any tiling job that you're going to get into in the near future. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so before we get started, you already know the deal. We're going to run through some housekeeping. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you watch this video and it helps you, don't forget to like it and drop a comment and share it with all your friends and let me know how I did. So without further ado, no more waiting. Let's get to the tools. All right, so getting right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is tools to cut tile. So. When everybody thinks about cutting tile, the first thing they think about is a wet saw. So this is our old faithful. We've had it for a very long time. When we first started tiling, we were using it all the time. The problem is now larger format tiles are big and you run into a lot of issues where it really just doesn't work anymore. So, this is great for a traditional, like a subway tile or smaller tiles, um, maybe even up to a 12 by 24 and depending on how you're cutting it. But you can see that with these larger tiles where this is kind of like a standard size now, the 24 by 48 and so on, that you can't really cut this on here. Even if you're, this is a seven inch, they make larger ones. It's still like, you know, it's hard to get a saw that's going to cut this large of a tile. And in addition, it's kind of a pain in the butt to set up. So as we've honed our skills and as we've progressed in the trade, we've come to like a lot of other tools, which give us a lot more versatility and it's a lot less setup and breakdown time. Cause also once you're done using this thing, it gets so gnarly. So the next tool we're going to talk about, for cutting tile is going to be the snap cutters. These things come in all different sizes and what's great about them is you can cut where you're working. So no more setting up and then cleaning up. It's like there's no dust. You get the versatility, but you also don't, you get the convenience of being able to cut close to your job, which means less travel to and from the wet saw, less time away from setting, faster completion for your projects. So they come in all different sizes. Here I just have my body pov and my Sigma. So I'm going to demonstrate my Sigma. And every snap cutter is kind of different. So this one is a pull snap cutter. So you set up your tile, you put the fence closer to you and you pull. They, the Sigma does have the option where you can get the other handle that it works as a push, but I kind of like the pull. I'm backwards anyway, so. And then this one is a push, the traditional push and snap. Um, this one has the little legs that come out that when you're ready to snap, you have to like pull up to engage them and then snap down. Um, so yeah, every snap cutter is a little bit different. So if you get one, you have to just familiarize yourself with them. They don't all work exactly the same, although it is score and snap. Some of them have their own nuances. Okay, so basically for this, you set your fence, make sure that it's tight. Put your tile up. Make sure it's tight to the fence. Now for this snap cutter, since it's a pull and not a push, I have to do a couple little things. I like to get, so if you could go like this and there's no pressure, but you have to like do this little and then the pressure is applied. So I like to do a little, a forward score like that. And then I'll reapply the pressure 
pull up with one hand and push down with the other, I need two hands, and pull all the way back with even pressure. So another thing that I learned is that you have to give it a finesse snap, not kill it. So I hold steady with one hand and then I just kind of That's it. That's all you need to do. And she's good to go. So now the other type of saws that are available are like a tabletop saw, um, a bridge saw, which is great if you're cutting large tiles. Like, Say you have a big job where you're, you're gonna be laying a lot of square foot of like, I don't know, a panel or a 24 by 48 tile. This is great for that because you set it up and you're gonna be there for a couple of days. So I wouldn't recommend necessarily a snap cutter for that. Um, maybe as an additional, maybe. But um, a bridge saw is great for those areas and that type of project, but for most residential projects, you might not need to whip that out. Um, a table saw for cutting tile is, it's good. It's a little bit messy because the water goes everywhere um, and you definitely would want to do that outside. This is good for the DIYer, the homeowner that's not going to be using this all the time. And if you're doing a smaller tile, those are very limited machines of what you can do. So now that we got that stuff out of the way, let me see. So really quick, um, this edge of the tile is a raw tile. So we're gonna get into in a couple steps of how you can polish this out and make it look more soft. You can see that it's like super raw right off the snap cutter. If this cut was being hidden, that would be okay, but I always recommend polishing this. So the next cutting tool that you can use for tile is going to be the grinder. Okay, so the grinder is another fantastic option for making cuts. You can cut any tile with a grinder from mosaic all the way to large format. It takes a little bit of skill and finesse to use this. Um, for cutting porcelain tile, you wanna use a corded grinder. They are much stronger, have the higher RPMs, which makes a smoother cut. You still sometimes end up with chipping depending on the type of tile you're working with. So I always recommend to also have a variable speed grinder. This one, um, you can turn the speed down or up however high you need. And then you can get the dry diamond polishing pads. And what this will do after you make your cut, whether it's on the wet saw, snap cutter, whatever you choose to use, grinder, you can go ahead and polish up that edge and make it look really smooth. And it just gives your installation a whole other look. It's, it's really great. Um, you can also cut with this. It's not as strong. So like if you're doing like a ceramic tile, you'll get away with it, but porcelain, might not be strong enough. Um, and then the battery will run out faster, but not to say we haven't done that in the past. Okay, so I always have a separate grinder set up, which is a variable speed for my dry diamond polishing pads. These come um, in a whole pack. You can get them, they're linked on my Amazon storefront and it comes with the felt backing that attaches to the grinder. Now, if you don't wanna purchase two separate grinders, that's perfectly fine. You have another option for polishing your cuts, which do the same thing, is the hand polishing pads that also come in the different um, grits, the diamond polishing pads that come in the different grits, um, which do the same exact thing as the variable speed grinder. It just takes a little bit more elbow grease. Can you show? So these are the little diamonds, basically that will polish the tile as you go over it and gives you the same finish as these do. So these are like the little diamonds. And they're in different grits and you can actually feel which ones are sharper, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, so moving on to the next thing is going to be cutting holes in your tile. If you're tiling a shower, tiling in a bathroom, tiling a kitchen, doing a backsplash, 
very, light, very high chances you're going to need to make a hole in a tile. So these hole saw bits for a tile, they're great. They're diamond hole saw bits to be more specific. This one, um, they make these that go onto a drill and also onto the grinder. The ones that go on the grinder are great because again, you get that really high RPM and it will make a smoother cut in the tile. The drill is a little bit, a little bit harder, um, but works just as well. I use this all the time. This is an example of one that goes on the grinder. This is just a small hole bit. Um, it kind of like just will core a little hole into the tile. You could also use it for, I don't know, polishing up some cuts or cutting in weird angles. You run into a ton of situations when cutting tile, so there's a ton of tools for any solution. All right, so now that we know the best cutting tools, these tools are gonna be what you're gonna need every job site to set any tile. Um, they are necessary and required, by my opinion. So the first thing is going to be buckets. You need buckets all the time. You need multiple buckets. We have probably at least five buckets on every job site. You carry your tools in the bucket. You need a bucket to mix your thin set. You need a bucket for water, et cetera, et cetera. And the list goes on. So buckets. Next is going to be um, a mixer with a paddle. Um, this is obviously necessary. You need to mix your thin set, your tile adhesive, whatever you call it, with this. None of that mastic stuff. You need to open up a bag, mix it with water, and mix it with a mixing drill. A specific mixing drill is required for thin set because they require a certain speed to be mixed and that's what these drills do. If you use one of your hand drills, you're gonna end up burning out the motor. It is not meant for that as the thin set is very thick and too much for your hand drill to handle. So moving on, you are going to need sponges. I literally have an entire bucket filled with these, not a five gallon bucket, like a moving bucket, filled with these because they're just, you need them all of the time. You also need microfiber rags. If you watch my videos, you see I often have them hanging out of my back pocket because I like to dry my hands off, clean off my, clean off my hands, my body, my clothes, whatever, when it gets dirty or dusty, and also the surface of the tile. Um, you're gonna need a scouring pad. These are great for cleaning your tools. You wanna make sure your tools don't especially your trowels. You don't want them to end up looking like this, okay? This is fine, it's just my mixer and I can go out with a hammer and get that off. But if that happens to your trowel, it's probably not coming off and you're gonna need a new one. Some people don't care, but whatever. Clean your tools. A toothbrush or a small brush to clean out your grout joints as you go. Again, if you've been following me, you know that I use this all the time to keep my grout joints clean. So when you set your tile, a lot of times you'll have thin set oozing out. What you wanna do is just take your toothbrush and clean it out. It's the greatest thing ever. You can wait a couple minutes for it to get a little hard, do that, or you can do it right away. It doesn't matter. The toothbrush will keep your grout joints nice and clean and make the next day so much easier without scraping out the grout joints and possibly shipping your tile. All right, so another piece, important tool, not piece. So another important tool that you should always have with you at all times are wedges. These are great for adjusting your tiles. Um, it really doesn't matter truthfully what size the grout joint is that your client chooses. Sometimes you'll have to make micro adjustments with these and these are just good to always have on hand for when those are, situations arise. Next is obviously just spacers. These are gonna change depending on the job and what your client wants. These horseshoe spacers we use all the time. They come in a variety of sizes um, and we just like to use them. So for the horseshoe spacers, it's a spacer. So you put them in between your tile to keep it straight. Now, say for example, there was an issue and your grout joints weren't lining up or Whatever the, the issue is, sometimes you need to make micro adjustments with the wedges. So like, that's how you would do that. Um, you can also, instead of the spacer, use the wedge. 
It really just all depends on the tile job. I always have these on hand and these just vary with the job. Another great option for spacers for your tiles. Now I would recommend these on a larger tile, like 12 by 24 and up. Um, you can probably use them on a 12 by 12, but uh, I just recommend these on larger tiles. So these are what you call leveling clips and these are spinners. There's also wedge ones, but I like, ah, I like these better. So let me show you how these work. So when you're setting your tile, pretend this one was set, right? I set this tile and now I do my thin set and I take this tile and I place it here. So it acts as a spacer and also it will help you keep your tiles from having lippage, right? So say if this was a subfloor, now just a quick disclaimer, I always recommend you prep your substrate, but we're not gonna get into that on this video, but these are fine tuning they help you get your installation flat faster so you can keep on moving. So basically what's gonna happen is you, as you tighten this down, it will flatten out the tiles so that there's no lippage, as you can see. All right, so the next tool and one of the most important is going to be your levels. You need these in multiple sizes. You need them. There is absolutely no exception to this tool. Yes, they are expensive, but they are absolutely necessary for setting tile. So really quick disclaimer. A lot of people think that leveling clips like this will level your tile. You can see we have a substrate here that is not perfect at all. If you put our, we put leveling clips in here, there's no lippage. If you put a level on here, it's not level. So it's flat, it would be acceptable, but it is not level, okay? So leveling clips do not level your tiles. They make them flat and acceptable as far as lippage is concerned. Flat is required, level is desired, that is the rule. Anyway, so yes, you need these to make sure your tile installation is plumb on the walls. You need to make sure your tile installation is flat or level on the floor however crazy you want to get, but these are important and it is extremely important. You need these all the way through from prep to install to finished, to the finished job. So if you come close, you can see how there's a big dip in the substrate here. If this was the floor, this happens all the time. There'll be a big dip. So this is an example of how you would use the level during your prep and before you set tile. Um, this also can happen when you have tile on an uneven floor as well. So that's why you always want to use a level all the way from the start of the job to the finished product so that you know that your, what you're installing is flat and that your prep is flat or level. Okay, so make sure you get yourself a good set of levels. I have a whole set linked to my Amazon storefront, which will be on this video as well. Okay, and so moving along to the notch trowel, which is, again, absolutely necessary. And you're going to need them in multiple sizes because it just all depends what size tile you're using, how flat your substrate is, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that the most essential sizes are going to be your half by half. This is good for larger tiles. Okay, so half by half means this spot here, half inch, and then it also is half inch tall. So half inch wide, half inch tall. This is a quarter by three eighths. This is good for smaller tiles or even you can use this on a 12 by 24 if, if the substrate is super flat and the tile of course is flat. Sometimes tiles are bowed, but we're not gonna get into that. You always wanna double check for coverage. So anyway, again, quarter by three, uh, quarter by three eighths. So a quarter is going to be the width, three eighths is the height. So it's a little bit long, taller than it is wide. This one is a V-notch. Well, you can use this for applying waterproofing membrane, for using, um, for installing mosaic tiles. It's a good trowel to have in your arsenal, um, quarter by quarter, and it just, it like spreads the thin set differently than a square trowel. They make square notch, V notch, U notch. 
again, these are staples, right? So you'll gain your style and your flow, your technique, how you want to install all on your own after doing it. But these are just my staples that I think anybody should have. And another absolute must have is a margin trowel. So like while you're working, you're constantly using the margin trowel. Some people like to just pick up the thin set with the trowel the, you know, itself, but I also like to use this as a cleaner, like you know, scraping any excess thin set off or scraping my bucket clean. It's just a nice additional tool to have. And I find myself using it all of the time. Another thing to have in your arsenal, now this would be when your tile assembly is all done, you've done your installation, you've done your cleaning, you're going to need a very good grout float. This is going to make or break you and make a difference in your, your grouting. Uh, they make all different types. This one is like a little bit softer. Um, they make harder ones, more rigid ones. It just, again, this is going to be something that's a personal choice, but if you just pick one up and try it out, see how you like it, Again, it's all going to be de like determined on what kind of grout you're using also, but definitely have a good grout flow in your arsenal for setting tile. So something I didn't mention yet is going to be ear protection and eye protection. These are absolutely necessary. A lot of these power tools are really, really loud. And then when you start trying to cut porcelain, it gets even louder. It's like a screeching that you will never forget. So you definitely need to protect your ears and then porcelain shards will go flying. So you definitely need to protect your eyes. Sometimes these shards are so tiny and then the little particle dust that comes off from cutting these tiles will get in your eyes, get all over you and it hurts. You want to protect your eyes, protect your ears and also wear a mask whenever possible because a lot of this stuff has silica dust which does cause cancer. So be very careful and protect yourself when doing any tile project. All right, everyone, so there you have it. This was my list of essential tiling tools to complete any tile project. You guys know my favorites, but I wanted to run you through a bigger list of ideas and maybe, maybe you can find something else that you would like to try in the future. So I hope this helped you. And again, let me run you through it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, drop a comment and let me know how I did or if I forgot anything. I'll see you guys on the next one.